time to do the job. Time to do the job! Behold the jobber of jobbers. Daniel. Daniel Jobber. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is the Edmonton area's own D-Job Danimal, Daniel Jobber, here with episode 3 of the Jobbing Out with Danimal, Daniel Jobber, 205 Live and WWE Cruiserweight Report. Now, I got to thinking that, uh, you know, you probably don't know a lot about me. You don't know who I am, or how I got this uh, crazy name. And so I wanted to take a little bit of time at the beginning of this podcast and just let you know a little bit about who I am. And actually, it was... Uh, a YouTuber that I really like to listen to called Delixman. And if you haven't heard Delixman, you should check him out. He's an amazing wrestling YouTuber. It's all kinds of great wrestling videos on WWE and other wrestling areas. So if you get a chance, check out Delixman on YouTube. But anyways, he did a video on being a nice person versus being a kind person. And sometimes, of course, you can be too nice of a person and forget about yourself. Forget to be honest about who you are. And uh, maybe, that, maybe that's where the uh, nice guys finish last things come from. So maybe it's better to be kind, you know, which is more being honest about yourself and your feelings and your opinions. And it might help other people in the process. But anyways, this video really helped me think about myself a little bit. And uh, made me realize that Danimal Daniel Jobber is actually a very fitting name. Because just like in Dr. Freud's theory, it is essentially my id, ego, and superego put together in a name. At least the way it, uh, those are symbolic of me. And of course, if you're not familiar with the theory, the it is the uh, it, or the, you know, the inner creature, or the inner fun-loving, me-first, playful, impulsive side of ourselves that, you know, maybe sometimes we don't always want to let out. And then, of course, the ego is the uh, true self, and the superego is our ideal self, the self that we want to be, or that we envision ourselves being in a perfect world. And essentially... The uh, animal is like my it. It's my inner creature. It's the side of me that, that wants to get out and have fun and, and be crazy sometimes and is my impulsive side. And then, of course, Daniel is definitely my ego. It's who I am. It's, you know, it's the, the, the person talking to you as we speak. And then, of course, my super ego is the jobber. And now, traditionally, jobber has negative connotations in the wrestling world, and I want to clarify that shortly. But... My vision of the jobber is not uh, that way, and I'll explain why. My vision of jobber is something that's a beautiful thing, a good thing, a great thing to be. And so essentially, Danimal Daniel Jobber is my id, ego, and superego put together. And essentially, uh, as is typical of, of who I am, my id and superego clash with each other sometimes and, and battle it out, and it's up to the ego to keep them under control. And so that's fitting that Daniel's in the middle with animal first, the id, Daniel in the middle, and then Jobber, which is the superego at the end, because it shows the, you know, the, the hierarchy, basically, of the id and the superego being separated by the ego. And, you know, if you want to think of it another way, basically, uh, the Danimal is the devil over my one shoulder, and the uh, Jobber is the angel over my other shoulder. So, anyways, that's how it all fits into Freud's theory, and why the name is so fitting. But, anyways, I want to clarify a little bit about the word Jobber, because WWE defines Jobber as a person who is paid temporarily for a contract to, to do some sort of job in wrestling usually it's it's type of it's to lose or to to make somebody else uh fill a hole to make somebody else look better uh, of course traditionally in wrestling though a jobber was referred to as enhancement talent basically a person who's paid to be a a loser and to to lose intentionally to make the other guy win you know help him uh look good and, and make him win and and basically your job is to just lose and some people think of that as a loser but that's such a negative way to look at such a, a noble profession and, and a, you know, a great thing to be. When I think of the jobber, I think of the fact that it, it's a person who lowers themselves and buries themselves to make other people look good first, makes other people great, makes people around them better, builds them up and, and makes them great. But in the process, they actually grow as a person themselves. And you know, they grow maybe more popular, more you know, people have to recognize they do what they do really well you know, when they get good at it. And in the process, a person becomes better themselves. 
And so I think of the jobber, the way I define jobber, is a person who makes other people around them great, and in the process, makes themselves better, or maybe even great as a result. And that's actually a beautiful way to think about life. Imagine if everybody, rather than just going out there to make themselves great and make their life great, they took the time to make the people around them great first and make them better, build them up, and only through that process made themselves better, made themselves great. If everybody had that philosophy and we all, you know, kind of worked together to, to think about our neighbor and our friend and our, you know, our family and our, our brothers first, what a beautiful world that would be. And I think, so that's why I think of the jobber as something great, a wonderful profession, a wonderful way of thinking of life. And so, for me, jobber is definitely a superego character. It's something that I believe in an ideal world. I know I want to be, and I think more people should be because of the fact that in so much of a me-first world, it'd be great if we took time to make other people great first, to put other people first, raise them up, and then if in the process we become better and we become great, awesome, amazing. That's the way it should be. This uh, me first, I got to make myself great at all costs philosophy may be the cause of a lot of other destructive areas of our of our world. So anyways, I won't go on more about that. I know I've, I've rambled on a little bit about that, but I really wanted to help you understand what Danimal Daniel Jobber means to me and why it's a very uh, intriguing and infectious uh, persona for me to have. And I hope it catches on with, with you as well and you understand the uh, the, the thinking behind it. And, you know, sometimes, yes, the, the animal gets a little out of hand, and I get a little crazy and fun and, you know, get a little overboard. And I hope, I hope that energy that I present with that makes, makes you have a good time, inspires you, you know, drives you to, uh, to enjoy this more. And if, and if you do, and you start to, to get and enjoy what I do, I hope you'll join the Jobber Squad. Be a good member of the Jobber Squad and, you know, show your friends, tell your friends, family, you know, show the people around you this podcast, show them, uh, you know, who I am, show them the Edmonton Sports Podcast Network as a, as a whole, and show them what kind of uh, stuff they might be missing right under their nose, right here in, in the Edmonton area. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, I hope you'll consider being a member of the Jobber Squad, as I like to call it, and yeah, be a good little jobber and do the same. Help us become great, and in the process, hey, you become a better person when you help other people be better. So that's my, my philosophy and my belief, and I hope that uh, it catches on with you too. So anyways, that's all I'm going to say about me this week. Of course, this week in the WWE is the uh, Backlash pay-per-view on Sunday with Alberta's own Jinder Mahal from Calgary going for the WWE Championship held by Randy Orton. Huge opportunity for, for Jinder Mahal, the, uh, the nephew of the great Gamma Singh from Karachi Vice, the, the Sing Sing Boys back in the Stampede Wrestling days in the early 80s that I was a huge fan of when I was a kid growing up. Yeah, it's a huge opportunity, and if he can win the championship, it'd be a great way to sell uh, wrestling in India, which is one of WWE's goals. And what a great position and role he would have at WWE if he's able to pull this off and make this successful. So I, I wish him well. I hope we all, all Albertans get together and get behind him. And to WWE, that, that we appreciate uh, what they're doing with him. Uh, I don't know if he's going to win or not, but and I just I should also add, too, I have my Backlash Previews and Predictions uh, podcast up on the network. I hope to take the time to check that out, too, and see what, what my thoughts are on that and all the other matches going on this weekend between NXT TakeOver Chicago and Backlash. So that should be up on the network, hopefully now, but if not, shortly. Uh, also, uh, more news on Braun Strowman's injury is that at least there's speculation he's more injured than they originally announced, or at least that's what they're publicly saying, that he shattered his elbow and is expected to be out as much as six months. Although there's other people that are speculating that this is this is actually a work somewhat, and that yes, he is injured, but that they have him plan to come back at SummerSlam and surprise everybody and take on Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship. And heck, maybe he'll take the title off him and win, which would be huge. Like, I'm a huge advocate for getting the title off of Brock Lesnar and doing away with these part-time Raw champion idea because I think it's really hurting the brand and really unfair to, to loyal Raw and, and WWE fans in general that they have this part-time champion who is allowed to go three months after winning the title without just having to defend it. So they talk of maybe they just switched it around and had the person who was supposed to be at uh, SummerSlam being the uh, his uh, Brock Lesnar's opponent at uh, Great Balls of Fire and instead having Braun Strowman come back and surprise everybody by taking on Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. So hopefully that's the case and that it's not truly a six-month injury because Braun Strowman is really coming on and it's been really exciting. And of course, anyone who dislikes Roman Reigns uh, is glad that, that you know he's doing well because he's really Roman Reigns' counterpart and top top rival at this point. So anyway, that, that's an interesting twist on the news that of his, uh, what they thought was, a, originally said was a rotator cuff in, injury or all the speculated as a rotator cuff injury. 
Anyways, one other note is that WWE is reportedly going to a picture-in-picture system for commercials in the near future. And this is actually pretty cool. This changes a lot. Because if you ever watch WWE television, you'll see before they go to a commercial, they do something exciting. And then they go to a commercial. And and if you ever have a live performance during the commercial, I guess they do a lot of slow, grinded-out submission-type moves. And things just aren't very exciting. And then when the commercials are over, they're told to get back into the high-speed action again. Basically making sure the best action is preserved for the... uh, for the time when they're on TV. Well, with this picture-in-picture system, that when the commercial comes on, there'll be a little picture of what's actually going on during that time. So, one, the wrestlers won't have to do this big spot before the commercial necessarily, though they still might, but it won't be as critical. And they can perform a little better during the commercial break as well because they'll know people can still follow what's going on while this is happening. So, yeah, that'll really change everything in WWE. It'll make the TV matches seem a little bit more natural, like, like the live non-televised matches because they won't have to have such a difference between when they're on TV and when there's a commercial. So yeah, I'm really excited about that. I hope that that comes soon and that they were able to do that on Raw, SmackDown, and all the network television as well, the WWE Network. So cross your fingers, that uh, really hits it off because the technology apparently has been developed and they're supposed to be going ahead with that and that really will be an exciting, nice change to Raw and SmackDown and all the other WWE shows, including my 205 Live, which is... Basically what we're about to talk about in in the Cruiserweight Report. Anyways, before we get going, I just want to ask my pal uh, Roman here. So anyways, Roman, can you tell everybody how amazing this podcast is and how they should come out and job out with me for the next little bit as we recap the Cruiserweight action from the week? I can and I will believe that. Thanks, buddy. There you have it, my pal Roman, everybody. Thanks a lot, bud. And now to the great Cruiserweight action from this week. So, first off, on the main event, we have Grand Metalik versus the Scottish Supernova, Noam Dar. This match was the last match to be aired from the Raw and SmackDown held in London, England, last week. Even though Noam Dar is from Scotland, and, and the announcers are trying to sell up how much home support he would be getting from England, the crowd is actually appreciating Grand Metal League more, which is kind of funny. Also of interesting note was the fact that Alicia Fox was not with Noam Dar in this match, and the announcers tried to make it sound like they were still patching things up and that the status of their relationship was uncertain. Anyways, the London crowd started off quite quiet, but really got excited into the match once Grand Metalik started doing his high-flying moves. They are even chanting, I believe chanting out the numbers of the 10 count when the wrestlers were outside the ring. Although it's hard to tell on TV exactly what they were chanting, but I think there was one, two, three... Anyways, for a match with no real storyline reason, it was a decent match with some good spots. There were a couple of really nice diving suicide attacks from Grand Middle Leak onto Dar outside the ring, and the crowd really appreciated both of them. Uh, Dar finally wins the match when he gets Middle Leak into the mat, sets up, and then hits his running Enziguri attack. It was really sad to see the end of the matches in London, though, as it was more fun to cover wrestling when the crowd is as into the match as the London crowd was. Into every Cruiserweight match they got to see. It was just really good to see. The London crowd was absolutely phenomenal for the uh, the shows in England. Anyways, then we had Monday Night Raw, where we have Neville and TJP versus Austin Aries and Gentleman Jack Gallagher as the match that was featured. And this is a really good tag team match, something we don't often see from the Cruiserweights, as there's no real established tag teams. Although, of course, Lindsay Dorado and Grand Middle League often team up, as do Rich Swan and Jack Gallagher. This was a carryover from last week's showdown in London, in which Neville and TJP interrupted a nice, formal thank-you toast from Jack Gallagher to Austin Aries, and it turned into quite a brawl, which I referred to as the uh, showdown in London. This is an action-packed match, but the ending started to look a bit like last week's brawl, actually, and it was quite the uh, highlight of the week, for, as far as I'm concerned. And so I'm going to recap the, uh, the ending. Jack Gallagher has TJP rolling on the mat towards the opposite corner of the ring, and looks like he might go for a running drop kick. However, Neville comes into the ring and jumps in front of him, and at the same time, Austin Aries comes into the ring and attacks Neville in turn. And while uh, Neville and Austin Aries are battling, TJP comes out from nowhere and takes out Austin Aries' bad knee. However, Jack Gallagher springs into action at this point, hits a big drop kick on TJP, and then a big drop kick on Neville, and this sends Neville outside the ring. Austin Aries then runs into the corner, climbs to the top turnbuckle, and launches himself onto Neville outside the ring. Air Aries. <laughs> Meanwhile, back inside the ring, TJP goes for a detonation kick but fails, and Gallagher hits him with a vicious headbutt, sending TJP into the opposite corner. And then, of course, Jack Gallagher sets up once again for his running drop kick, but Neville grabs his foot from outside the ring to stop him. Gallagher manages to kick Neville off of his foot, just as Austin Aries comes from the opposite side of the ringside area to take out Neville with his discus five arm. 
And Gallagher has his back to TJP. And TJP comes in and hits him with a running attack into the corner. Picks him up on his shoulders and hits him with a detonation kick. And he covers him for the one, two, three, TJP. Your winners, TJP and Novo. Another really exciting performance from these four, and a big win for TJP and Neville. Later on, after the match on Raw, they announced the 205 Live main event. Austin Aries versus TJP is going to happen. Then they show a backstage segment between Neville and TJP, where TJP talks about their great victory and reminds Neville that he hasn't gotten what he wants yet. And Neville reminds TJP that they still have an Austin Aries problem, but that Austin Aries' injured knee is hanging on by a thread, and that tomorrow night on 205 Live, they would finish things for once and for all. And then we go to 205 Live. For the show starts, they recap the events from Raw and show an interview with Austin Aries, in which he says that TJP will never get a title shot from Neville, because Neville's a liar, and because TJP will never be on his level enough to take him out. And then we have the first match. Grand Metalik versus the Scottish Supernova, Noam Dar. Yeah, you heard right. The exact same pairing from the main event. That disappoints me. With such a deep and talented roster, they choose to air the two matches between the same two cruiserweights in a single week. Now, I know the matches are done almost a week apart. And, of course, this match has Noam Dar with Alicia Fox. And the two matches were far from identical. But seeing the same pairing twice in a week feels boring and cheap to me. I wonder if this is some sort of cost-cutting measure to give... Lindsay Dorado and Akira Tozawa some time off, and have most of the other roster members only appear in what was likely a pre-taped backstage segment. With the reports of a 205 Live not doing that well, it wouldn't surprise me if this was a cost-cutting measure, maybe to keep a 205 Live on a lower operating budget. I mean, who knows? I know I miss Akira Tozawa this week, though. No battle cry. Ha! 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 Actually, speaking of Akira Tozawa, I forgot to mention that on Raw, there's a segment where they announced that on 205 Live next week, there will be a no-holds-barred street fight between the Brian Kendrick and Akira Tozawa. And they show Kendrick uh, saying that he was happy because anything goes in a match like that, and he could fight Tozawa anywhere he wants outside the ring, and there'd be no count-outs. So that should be pretty exciting. Anyways, back to the match at hand. The match was not that much different than their previous match, unfortunately, um, between Metalik and Dar, I mean, with the exception of Alicia Fox being there to show off her support for Noam Dar, and of course get in Metalik's way. Gold digger, she's a gold digger. It's quite a similar kind of match, though. A bit of high-flying stuff for Metal Leak with a few hard, well-timed assaults. And Oam Dar with his ground and pound style. Grand Metal Leak hits one really nice move near the end of the match. Standing on the corner turnbuckle with Dar on the mat, he steps sideways onto the bare top rope and springboards off of it, hitting a flying elbow on Dar. However, shortly after this, Noam Dar knocks Metal Leak off the ropes onto the mat, Sets up and once again hits his running Enziguri for the victory. This time the announcer seemed to refer to it as the Scottish Supernova or Supernova Kick, which will be interesting to see if they give that move that name going forward. I think just calling it the Supernova Kick is a pretty cool name for the move. That's what I'd like to see it called. So I might even start referring to it as that, even if they don't. The Supernova Kick from Noam Dar. Anyways, Noam Dar gets the victory and gets to celebrate with his lovely girlfriend, Alicia Fox. Did I mention that she was a gold digger? The next segment has Tony Nese waiting in the ring and they announce his opponent as Mustafa Ali. So they're going to have a match, right? No, 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 no. Because out comes Drew Gulak in a suit and attacks Ali from behind as he attempts to enter the ring. He takes him out and throws him into the barricade, and kicks him in the stomach, and he starts yelling at Ali saying, I know better! And he throws him into the LED screen ring posts. He said, no high flying, you son of a, no high flying, hotch. <laughs> Gulak then throws Ali into the ring and uh, sets him up nicely in the corner for Tony Nese to hit him with his running knee, knee attack. The segment ends with Gulak in the ring over Ali's unconscious body, holding up his no fly zone sign. What a statement for Drew Gulak's cruiserweight crusade. And yes, no match happens. So once again, only two matches on 205 Live and only four Cruiserweight matches for the week. Anyways, after the break is the amusing but likely pre-taped segment I mentioned before. Starts off with Dasha interviewing Rich Swan, reminding him that Noam Dar said he would get what he deserved for trying to break them up, him and Alicia Fox. Rich Swan replies saying that what he deserves is to get as far away from those lunatics as he can. He says, the nerve of them thinking they can play my tricks on me. 
And just as he's saying that, a delivery guy comes in with a package for Richard T. Swan. Swan says, that's not for me. You made a mistake. And directs the delivery guy over to Arya Duvari, who's all decked out in his fancy threads, looking into the mirror, getting ready for something. When the delivery guy offers him the package, Devari originally says it must be his $2,500 Persian platinum sunglasses that were manufactured in Abu Dhabi. He sends the guy away and says, wait a minute, these aren't my sunglasses, and sets the package down and walks away. In comes Jack Gallagher, who picks up the package, looking like he wants to see what it is, but then Devari comes back and catches him. He tells Gallagher to get his grubby paws off his package, and refers to him as common street trash. Gallagher says he will overlook the comment, as they don't want to revisit the scoundrel business again, referring to their feud from a bunch of months ago when 205 Live first started. Of course, he walks away. Anyways, Devari takes the package, and this time he finally opens it, and of course, white powder shoots out all over his expensive threads, and the statement ends with him shouting in a foreign language and getting frustrated all over the place. <laughs> Quite funny. It's a good way to continue to develop his new character, which is pompous, money-toting, chic-type character. Even the announcer, Corey Graves, was starting to laugh when scolding Tom Phillips for laughing his head off because of how much the shirt probably cost that, that Tavari was wearing. They also quickly recapped the attack from Drew Gulak on Mustafa Ali and, of course, report, as per usual, that Ali has been taken to a local medical facility. <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> Anyways, then we have our main event of the evening. TJP versus Austin Aries. A double himself. This is a pretty decent main event. The two had a brutal brawl of an encounter with TJP working over Austin Aries' bad knee and Aries often selling his injury. Aries also tries repeatedly to rally the crowd and get them behind him and by waving his arm and everything and he succeeds pretty good. The crowd is starting to get behind him for the most part. Through his injury, Aries still manages to hit a nice move combo ending with his pendulum elbow. Later on, he also manages to go from hobbling in the ring to running his way into a heat-seeking missile suicide dive onto TJP. Later in the match, though, TJP puts Austin Aries into his knee bar on his injured knee and actually grabs the rope to help him for a few seconds while the ref was more focused on Aries. Luckily, the ref looks and sees TJP holding the rope before Aries has a chance to tap out. The ref makes TJP break the hold. After the two get up, TJP goes for his detonation kick, but Aries grabs the top rope, preventing the move. Then Aries breaks out and counters the move into his last chancery, and TJP quickly taps out, giving Aries the victory. And then from out of nowhere, Neville comes into the ring and attacks Austin Aries. He works over his injured knee for a minute and then puts Austin Aries into some type of knee lock submission hold and keeps him in it while Aries screams and screams. Luckily in comes Jack Gallagher in street clothes for the save and breaks up the hold. He hits Neville with a vicious headbutt sending Neville outside the ring to join his associate TJP. And the show ends with Neville and TJP backing away from the ring area, Gallagher reeling from the headbutt and the ref attending to the poor injured Austin Aries. Pretty good show, all in all. And it's still two weeks until Ares meets Neville at Extreme Rules, so they still have some time to kill and some selling of the uh, effects of Austin Aries' injured knee to do. So we'll see how that goes. I really want to root for Austin Aries and feel for him as they're trying to portray him, an injured underdog who's fighting the injury at all costs, try to get his heroic shot at the Cruiserweight Championship. But I'm really having trouble because Austin Aries just comes across as so arrogant. I have trouble feeling sorry for him. I almost feel like He's getting what he deserves, just like Neville is when bad stuff happens to him. It feels like the battle between two heels to me, for, for whatever reason. And with the greater heel being, still being Neville, I find myself leaning towards Neville to retain the title. I don't know, I, I, just, I guess I'm just having trouble accepting Austin Aries as a baby face. Anyways, the other intriguing possibility is that TJP will turn on Neville at Extreme Rules and cost him the title, figuring that he has a better chance of getting a title shot if Austin Aries is the champion. This is something else that could definitely happen, and it should be interesting in a couple of weeks to see if that, that's the case. Anyways, on a side note, it finally occurred to me how strange it is that 205 Live never shows anyone in charge. No GM, no commissioner. It makes you wonder what they expect you to believe about who decides what matches will be fought. Surely they don't expect us to believe that the cruiserweights just decide for themselves who fights whom. It's something they may want to think about. It's kind of awkward and wonky having a wrestling show where no one appears to be in charge. Anyways, this is it from the cruiserweight division this week. We look forward to the big street fight between the Brian Kendrick and Akira Tozawa on 205 Live next week. Should be a gooder. So anyways, thanks for listening. Once again, I am the D-Job, Danimal, Daniel Jobber, self-proclaimed Duke of the Cruiserweights. You can follow me on Twitter at, at Daniel Jobber with a capital D and a capital J. Or on Instagram on Danimal Daniel Jobber, all lowercase. And of course, you can go to my awesome website, danimaldanieljobber.ca, where you can check out my awesome 
power rankings, which are really popular, all my fun stuff, my shenanigans, even my uh, my recorded karaoke music. Hope you'll check it out. Hope you'll sign up for Discus Discuss, whatever you want to pronounce it, and leave me a comment. Let me know you were there. Let me know what you think. It also serves as kind of like a uh, you know a guest book to sign to say that you were there. So I would really appreciate it if you take the time to do that for me if you happen to go to my website and like what you see, or or even if you just want to say hi, or leave me any comments about anything that you that you want to see, what you think about the cruiserweight division, whatever. And of course, I still put some of my videos up on my YouTube channel, Daniel Jobber, on YouTube. Um, I put the older versions of this uh, podcast generally up there with, with a logo for video. And of course, I when I do some new things, I often do a video version and put it up there as well. And any other con I try to do, maybe I'll, I sometimes stream some uh, WWE 2K17. So you feel free to check me out there as well. Leave me comments there too. And of course, if you really want to, you can email me at danimaldanieljobber at gmail.com. It's another way to get a hold of me. So Once again, I'm proud to be part of the Edmonton Sports Podcast Network. And once again, this show is coming to you courtesy of them. I'm proud to have my show alongside such great podcasts as Mike the Ref's own The Blown Call and a shorter podcast known as Quick Calls. And of course, there's also such great Alberta wrestling content such as CWC Evolution and RCW Breakout, which features Mike the Ref's awesome wrestling commentary. And of course, we're proud of the Sounds of Struggle podcast featuring the always entertaining and amazing chemistry between Chris Parrish and Maniac. Check them out. Move with them. Just move with them. Just move with them. Just move with them. And enjoy their amazing knowledge of sports and wrestling and their exciting energy they bring to their podcast. Never a dull show from these guys. And of course, remember you can enjoy the magic of the Edmonton Sports Podcast Network on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play Music, and of course on the awesome mobile app Podbean, which you can download and install on your Android or Apple device today. And when you realize what a great network the Edmonton Sports Podcast Network is, make sure you go to whatamaneuver.net slash collection slash Edmonton hyphen SPN and buy the great merchandise and t-shirts that are there. Uh, there's even a t-shirt from, of course, the Sounds of Struggle podcast, which also comes in smaller sizes and baby onesies. So you can start your baby off uh, on the right foot being a fan of the Edmonton Sports Podcast Network. And... Coming very soon, next couple of weeks, the official Danimal Daniel Jobber t-shirt with my logo on it. I'm looking forward to that to to launch. I'm actually going to be a t-shirt, and of course I'll let you know as soon as that launches. I can't wait. It's going to be very exciting to see my own t-shirt there. I'll be the first in line to buy one, show it off in all my videos, and show off what a great product Whatamaneuver.net produces. Yeah, really looking forward to the t-shirt. Anyways, make sure you follow the uh, Edmonton Sports Podcast Network and Mike the Ref, first of all at Edmonton SPN, capital S, capital P, capital N, and of course, capitally on Edmonton, uh, where you can follow uh, the, on Twitter. And of course, you can follow Mike the Ref on Instagram under Mike the Ref, EDM, all lowercase letters. And of course, when you enjoy all the great content from the Edmonton Sports Podcast Network, make sure you like it, thumbs up, or whatever it is, or thing on the media that you're watching it on, and subscribe to anything you appreciate from the Edmonton Sports Podcast Network to show us your appreciation for our content and that you want to see more great content from the Edmonton Sports Podcast Network. So anyways, with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Hope you enjoyed the great week in Cruiserweight action, and we look forward to another week next week. Of course, this weekend we have NXT TakeOver Chicago and the Backlash pay-per-view on Sunday, where we're going to get to see Alberta's own Jinder Mahal compete for Randy Orton's WWE Championship. It's going to be a very exciting weekend in wrestling action. And don't forget that on June 16th, the WWE is coming to Edmonton to put on a Raw-branded show in which the announced main event is Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt. Perhaps my two favorite WWE wrestlers right now. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to afford to go. So if any of you want to treat the jobber and invite him, I think I'm free. (laughs) Just kidding. Anyways, you guys have a wonderful weekend. Jobber out! Time to do the job! Behold the jobber of jobbers. Daniel. Daniel. Jobber. Ha 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 ha.